nothing like your presence, Lord. All I want is to be with you. There's nothing like your presence, Lord. All I want is to be with you. There's nothing like your presence, Lord. All I want is to be with you. There's nothing like your presence, Lord. All I want is to be with you. in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Once again, we are honored to gather on this Lord's Day. Those who have gathered in person as well as those that are watching by Facebook Live, we want to give our Lord another hand clap of praise because of his grace, 
and his mercy that we are here today. And it's only because of his grace and his mercy that we are here. I just want to remind those who are watching by Facebook that this is our third Sunday, Holy Communion. So please, after the preaching of God's word, get some elements, some type of bread, some type of juice, as we remember what our Lord did for us 2,000 years ago on a hill called Calvary as he paid a debt that we owed because we owed a debt that we could not pay. Also, I want to just bring the members of Beulah up to speed. We are just about there with our new church design. Let's give God a hand clap of praise for that. Amen. Uh, we met with the architect on Friday, and things are moving forward, and we are excited about what God is going to do right here on the corner of Anderson and Reynolds. But now, this is where the members of Beulah and the Beulah buddies, if you are a buddy of Beulah, you say, I love what's going on with Beulah, and I want to be a help, a contributor to, to that new facility that's going to be a blessing to that community. I want to remind the members of Beulah, next month, Lord willing, on top of our normal tithe and offering, we're asking, we're asking every member to sacrifice an additional $25 towards the building fund. Every member, I repeat, every member to sacrifice an extra $25 towards the building fund. Why is that important? We want to eliminate this debt fast, that we can be a church in this community helping those who need help financially, and the only way we can do that, we must be in a financial position to do that, and if you are a Beulah buddy and you want to do that, at the end of service, we're going to give you the information on how you can support us throughout 2021, being a Beulah buddy, contributing to our building project here at Beulah Baptist Church. We're now going to have an announcement from our own sister, Frances Maddie, and following this announcement, we are here from our very own BBC Choir. This time of year, we are usually in the midst of making final preparations for our Shepherd and Shepherdettes pastoral anniversary celebration. Unfortunately, due to COVID-19, we cannot be together this year, but we can still show our love, support, and appreciation to our awesome pastor, Anthony Lee Edwards, and his lovely wife, Sister Terrain Edwards, who have led Beulah Baptist Church for 14 years now. A letter was sent out to members with instructions on how to give a love offering. If you have not received one or have any questions or concerns, please contact me at 912-996-1096 or message me here on Facebook. If you are not a member of Eula Baptist Church but would like to give a love offering, please contact me as well. I know that you have seen that Pastor Edwards is a true man of God who diligently works hard for the kingdom every day. So, if you think that you may not have anything to give, but you are familiar with Beulah Baptist Church and our pastor, then you know our pastor welcomes your prayers. Prayers for wisdom, strength, and the ability to continue doing God's work here. Again, my telephone number is 912-996-1096. Please contact me. Just wanna praise you forever and ever and ever for all you've done, done for me. Bless. 
say thank you hallelujah I just want to praise him forever and ever uh, just to give those a little nugget if you got a problem praising him right now then you don't need to go to heaven and let me say that again if you have a problem with praising our Jesus right now then you don't need to go to heaven because that's what we're going to do throughout eternity. We're going to worship and praise the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Aren't you glad about that? Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, choir. 
for all that he's done for me. Amen. Uh, once again, we thank God for being here today. I thank God for Sister Francis with our announcement about next Sunday would be 14 years that God led me. And, and notice what I said, that God led me this way. It was not something that I chose to do on my own. Truly, the Lord Jesus Christ ordered my steps, and God could not have sent me, sent me to a better people or a better place than right here at Beulah Baptist Church. And I want to thank you, Beulah members. You do make pastoring so much easier than a lot of pastors have it. Amen. Give yourselves a hand clap of praise. Uh, there are always issues in the church, but I can say for the most part, uh, it is a joy. It is a true joy of serving the people here at Beulah Baptist Church. Amen. With that being said, please find 2 Peter chapter 1. 2 Peter chapter 1 as we hear part 3 of our current sermon series, Grow to Show What You Know. Grow to show what you know. Peter is about the believer growing in spiritual maturity. This is what Peter is going to stress here in his letter, his second letter. And as an under-shepherd here at Beulah Baptist Church, my heart is just like Peter. I want you to be saved far above everything else, but we want you to grow. And as we said in one of our messages, unfortunately, the church is one of few places that people can stay babies and people don't have a problem with that. It is a mandate that we grow to show what we know. We got to live out what we say we truly have come to know in our lives as it relates to the word of the living God. Here in 2 Peter chapter 1, we want to target for our reading this morning, verses 12 through 15, and I'll be reading from the New King James Version of the Bible. Here in 2 Peter chapter 1, starting at verse 12, it says this, For this reason, I will not be negligent. To remind you always of these things, though you know and are established in the present truth. Yes, I think it is right as long as I am in this tent to stir you up by reminding you. Knowing that shortly I must put off my tent. Just as our Lord Jesus Christ showed me. Verse 15. Moreover, I will be careful to ensure that you always have a reminder of these things after my decease. Peter says, when I'm far long and gone, there should be a reminder that you have of the truths that I've given to you. Let us pray. Father, in the gracious and wonderful name of Jesus, Lord, we just want to praise you forever and ever. Lord, you've made a way. Lord, through all that we face in our world today, Lord, you still make a way. And for that, we say thank you. Holy Spirit, your presence is requested. And because I'm a feeble man, your presence is required. Speak to our hearts, Father, in that spiritual way that only you can. Father, allow your word to fall on good soil, good ground, that we may bear fruit 30, 60, and 100 fold. And Father, when all is said and done, we'll make sure that we're going to praise you forever and ever. These are all blessed we ask in Jesus' name. We pray in every heart. Say amen, amen, amen. You may be seated, but please, Facebook Live, good morning. Keep those Bibles open, those apps unlocked as we deal with part three of our sermon series, Grow to Show What You Know. Part three of our sermon series, as we focus in on verse 12 through 15, we're going to deal with a message entitled, Reassurance with remembrance reassurance through remembrance Peter as we talked about is focusing on the maturity of the believers 
I'm not going to go on a long review, but I just got to remind us that it is important that we grow up as children of God. I need to push this down out too often around the church. Too many believers remain childish, rather growing to be childlike. <laughs> Can I get a witness there? Fighting and squabbling about things that don't mean anything. And what Peter is focusing on, on his second epistle, his second letter, he said it's time that the believers transition from immaturity to spiritual maturity. Paul said in that wonderful letter of 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 10, Paul said, when I was a child, I what? Spoke like a child. I thought like a child. I behaved like a child. But now Paul says, but when I became a man, I did what? Put away childish things. Come here, Facebook. Come here, members. It's time for us to put away childish things and for us to grow to show. Just stop talking about it. Show people what you really know. And can I just say this? You don't really, I don't really have a scripture until we're living it out. See, many times people say, oh, he know the Bible, she know the Bible. But I want to let you know, we don't really know it until we're doing it. Amen? And now this is what Peter is focusing on as we've dealt with the obtaining of light, precious faith. This is what Peter said in our first message, salutation to the saints. He's talking to those who have surrendered their hearts to Jesus Christ. But then last week we dealt with the building process. Remember, it's great that we're born into God's family, but God said, I don't just want you to be born into my family. I want you to blossom in my family. I want you to grow. I want you to flourish. I want you to be fruitful. In order for us to do that, it takes the building process. We saw that through 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 5 through 11. Peter said, you got to add to your faith virtue. Can I get a witness? You got to add to your virtue knowledge. You got to add to your knowledge some perseverance. You got to add to your perseverance some, some self-control. You got to add some things. We talked about in the near future. We're going to be grateful when we see that foundation laid here. Amen. Amen. Yes, Lord. When they bulldoze these buildings and they put that foundation, because the foundation is the most important part of the structure. Amen. Though it's unseen, it's the most important. But listen, Beulah, I don't know about you, but guess what? I'm not going to be satisfied with just seeing a foundation. I want the building process to be completed. I want us to add to that foundation some plumbing. I want us to add some roofing. I want us to add some electricity. I want us to add all those things that we can walk in here and praise God for all that he has done. I concluded last week saying this, this spiritual building process will not be completed until we are looking at Jesus face to face. See, I said last week in my conclusion of the building process, I won't be able, you won't be able to exhale until we hear the Lord say, well done, my good and faithful servant. And that moment we could say, at last. But only until then, we still need to be building spiritually. And now Peter wants to bring us some reassurance by bringing us into remembrance. <laughs> How many know reminders are good? You see, I understand that we read fast, but we got to learn to read slow and let the Holy Spirit bring enlightenment and illumination from the Word of God to our hearts. So what Peter wants to do, he said, I want to bring you some reassurance through some reminding you of some things you've already learned. And that's what I want to do this morning. I want to just remind us so you and I can be rooted, we can be founded on the truth, and don't allow anybody to move us away from that. Verse 12 of 2 Peter chapter 1. Let's look at verse 12 as we talk about reassurance through Remembers. Look at verse 12. For this reason, I will not be negligent to what? Remind you. Say remind you. Verse 13. Let's look at verse 13. Yes, I think it is right as long as I'm in this tent to stir you up by, say, reminding you. Now, that's the second time. See, when you're reading the Bible, when you see a word being repeated, pause. Take time. Why is the author repeating that word so much? 
Can I get a witness there? See, that's how you begin to grow, by studying out what is the author of that book. Use it. Why is he using that word so much? He says here now, I remind you, verse 12, verse 13, reminding you, verse 15, moreover, I will be careful to ensure you, I mean, ensure that you always have a reminder of these things after my Disease. Remind, reminding, reminder. Now, right here in 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 1, 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 1, what does he say here? Beloved, I now write to you this what? Second epistle, in both of which I once again stir up your pure minds by way of reminder. Peter says, Come here, let me let me talk to you. I need you to remember. Hey, 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 now, now, it's not that they had forgotten. No, they hadn't forgotten, but Peter didn't want them to forget. <laughs> Let's look at verse 12 once again here in 2 Peter. They hadn't forgotten, but he didn't want them to forget. And this is why I take my time to repeat a lot of things. It's not that you have forgotten. I don't want you to forget what has already been said. Verse 12 said, for this reason... I will not be negligent to remind you always of these things, though you what know and are what established in the what present truth. Peter said, "Now you are established, but I want you to remain that way." And that's what we're going to look at. We got to stay fixed. We got to stay firm. We got to stay rooted on the word of God. There's nothing more heartbreaking as we're going to see as parents or grandparents when you take years to teach your children certain principles in life. Teaching them about manners. Teaching them about ways of life, how they are conduct themselves. And then they let Joe Blow, who they just met yesterday, cause them to forget all that you've taught them all of those years. That's the same pain in a pastor's heart. When, when, when you labor to open up the word of God, you spend time researching and studying to stand up there to declare a 40 to 45 minute message because you, you, your heart aches when you see the children of God. Quick to forget what the word of God says. Peter is going to talk about the importance, watch this now, of having a good spiritual memory. You know, I'm 48 now, and when you're pastor, <laughs> a lot be on your mind. And I've gotten to the point now, I'll walk in a room and forget why I came in there. Can I get a witness? Well, I'll walk in the room and I say, what, 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 what did I come in here for? And I start looking around the room, I said, man, I know I came in here for something. What did I come and I lean on the wall? What, boy, what did you come in here for? Then I go back and do something, and 30 minutes later, boom, <laughs> it come back to memory. Can I get a witness there? Uh, what Peter is saying, I want the believer, and what I'm simply saying, those who watch about Facebook, those who are here, I want you to have a good spiritual memory. Those who are in here, those who are watching my Facebook Live, who had to deal with the agony of a loved one suffering from that tragic disease of Alzheimer's. Someone who is vibrant physically. Someone who still can do physical tasks. I mean, they have all the strength possible to do the task, but their memory is gone. My heart goes out to you when you see mom or dad or that uncle, that auntie or that friend that you knew, how vibrant of a, a man, how vibrant of a woman they were. But now because of this, this, this terrible disease, their memory is gone. This is what Peter is talking about. Peter said, I want you to have a good, strong memory. I want to remind you. I want to give you remindings. I want to give you reminders because I want to give you some reassurance through remembrance. That's what Deuteronomy chapter 8 is all about. If you Go back. See, y'all don't do no homework in church. 
All these scriptures I be quoting, ain't nobody be going looking up. Look, let me see what pastor talking about with this text. Homework ain't going to, spiritual homework ain't going to kill you. So now I'm quoting Deuteronomy 8 because it's a great reference scripture to what Peter is talking about when we talk about, say this word, remembrance. See, in Deuteronomy 8, this is what God was telling the children of Israel. God says, listen, it is a chapter about remembering God. This is what God was telling Israel. He said, Israel, listen at me now. When I bring you into a place flowing with what? Milk and honey. When I give you houses that you didn't build, when I give you wells that you didn't dig, please, children of Israel, do God a favor. This is what God was saying. Just remember me. <laughs> God said, just remember me. When I bring you, I'm going to do it. <laughs> I'm going to bring you into this land of prosperity. And, and all I want you to do, remember who did it for you. Oh, let me talk to somebody. When God brought you through that college, when you thought about giving up, God said, remember, I'm the one that gave you the strength to carry on. To that single mom when you couldn't see your way, but God showed up and made a way. Jesus said, don't forget, remember, I'm the one that did that. Beulah, when we come into that new facility, I promise you, we're not going to forget the Lord. Because this is the Lord's doing, and it's marvelous in our eyes. That's what Deuteron Deuteronomy 8 was all about. It was about remembering a great God. When Jesus instituted the Last Supper, the Holy Communion, what is the famous quote Jesus said? Do this in remembrance of me. This is third Sunday, the time we were, we were going to fellowship with the Holy Communion. And listen, it's become a fad in the church now. Oh, I need my communion. But listen, do you understand what the communion represents? When you get that cup in about several more minutes, do you remember what Jesus did for you? And he didn't have to do it. See, I'm pushing it right now. See, see, now we just get the cup and we just turn it up and drink it. We don't even think. No, he said, do this in remembrance of me. He said, listen, understand you were hell bent and hell bound, but I rescued you. And the problem is, we don't remember how good Jesus has been to us. So now things just become a ritual versus remaining relevant. It becomes a ritual. This is what we do on Thursday. No, he said, do this in remembrance of me. Question, as we're going to break down our text now, I just got two major points in 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 12 through 15 this morning. Just two points. But question, are you a forgetful follower? Every day the Lord wake you up, do you forget who did it? It wasn't your alarm clock. I promise you, you know why? Go to any funeral home, and you can go buy all the alarm clocks you want, and go into the embalming room, plug them up, set them for 5 o'clock a.m., and see if anybody move. And if they do, you better make a door out of there. It wasn't the alarm clock that woke us up. It was God's grace and his mercy. Are you forgetful about that? When you begin to proceed, when I begin to proceed out of our house, dead, do you know what Psalm 23 and 6 says? Goodness and mercy shall follow. Every day we leave our house, right there behind us is goodness and mercy. And we need to remember that and stop being some forgetful followers. I'm learning. I haven't gotten there yet. <laughs> but I'm learning to appreciate the small things. Many people wake up grumbling. They go through the day complaining. They go through the day whining and murmuring. Instead of thinking about how good the Lord has been to me. I promise you, things could always be worse. Now let's break down our text. Our two high points today is this. From 2 Peter chapter 1, number 1, Peter speaks of his duty. Amen. We're going to see that Peter speaks of his duty. He's telling us what his duty, his obligation is. And number two, Peter speaks of his departure. Peter said, guess what, y'all? Boy, we're going we're gonna to hammer this. Peter said, listen, I'm going to speak to you about my duty. But number two, I want to speak to you about my departure. Peter said, Brian, I'm not going to always be here. 
Oh, I know some people living like they're gonna, they think that they're going to always, you ain't going to always, I don't care. Listen, I believe in fitness. I believe in taking vitamins and all that. But one day, no matter how many trips you make to the gym, no matter how many good vitamins you take, one day we all going to leave here. And Peter settled that issue. Peter said, I want to speak to you about my duty, but I also want to speak to you about my departure. Here in 2 Peter chapter 1, starting at verse 12, Peter want to speak to us about his duty. Let's read verse 12. Here it says, for this reason, I will not be negligent to remind you always of these things, though you know and are established in the present truth. Remember now, it wasn't that they had forgotten the truth, but people, Peter didn't want them to forget the truth. So in order for them not to forget, guess what Peter had to do? He had to remind them. He had to say it over and over and over again. Can I get a witness there? Uh, this is what Peter's talking about. Peter said, listen, watch this now. Peter said, I will not be accused of spiritual malpractice. Peter said, I refuse to be what? Negligent. When a doctor, he or she is negligent, what they call it? Malpractice. You get sued for that. Peter said, listen, I'm not going to commit spiritual malpractice. I realize what my duty is. My duty is to remind you over and over and over. You may be tired of hearing it, but I'm not tired of saying it. Can I get a witness there? I, I, I love the other day, Terrain and I were somewhere, and oftentimes I was, we might have been at the house, and I, and I would say, hey, so-and-so text me, remind me to... Uh, Text them back. Or so-and-so called me. Or so-and-so. And the other day she said, you need to text so-and-so. And I looked at her with that funny look. And she said, I'm just doing my duty. I'm here to remind you. I looked at her. I said, girl, you something else. Can I get a witness there? I mean, she stood bold. She said, I'm just doing my duty. I'm here to remind you of what you should be doing. Can I get a witness? And that's what Peter says. I'm just simply doing my duty. I'm here to remind you because it's my duty. He said it's my duty to always, not sometime, not every now and then. Tell me, he said it's my duty to always remind you of these things what things is peter talking about the things he just talked about previously about how they have obtained light precious faith how grace and peace should be multiplied how there need to be a, a building process how they need to be fruitful verse uh, 8 9 and 10 and not forgetful he said i'm reminding you of all these things and that's my job i got to remind you sometimes just remind you how good the lord has been can I get a witness there? Cause, cause, you know why? Because we so easy to forget. It's so quick for us to develop spiritual amnesia. Peter said, it's my duty. I, I told you about obtaining light, precious faith, salvation. I told you about making sure the multiplication of grace and peace in your life. The spiritual gift, the spiritual growth. Peter said, I want to make sure that when all is said and done, you stay rooted on the truth. I see so many men and women so easy to be moved off of truth because they don't have daily reminders. Paul said this to the church at Ephesus. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 14. Listen at what Paul says to the church at Ephesus verse 14 of chapter 4. That we should no longer be children tossed to and fro and cared about with every little wind of doctrine by the trickery of men. Hey, stay tuned because guess what Peter's about to transition to shortly? To false teachers and false doctrine. Y'all better get that. Go and read. Start reading chapter 2 of 2 Peter chapter 2. Peter's going to deal with the false teachers and what's so amazing and what's so sad you got born-again believers that think we are the same with Jehovah Witnesses and Mormons. 
well, you know, you no, know, no, no, they going to hell because they have not believed in the gospel. Paul said to the believers at Ephesus, don't be like those little children tossed what? Two? It means being thrown, you know, thrown all around by every little what? Wind of doctrine. You know, I, I listen, right now we're in a time where, where you can just watch a lot of stuff, a lot of stuff on Facebook. And, and I'm telling you, you're finding out those who are rooted in sound doctrine and those who are not. And, and I see a lot of people shouting and joy about someone that's not even preaching a text in this context. Oh, y'all, y'all, well, I'm telling y'all, y'all stay tuned when we get into those false teachers. He, he's trying to tell it. listen, Paul said, don't be like those little ch- children tossed to and fro and carried about with every little wind of doctrine. But then Paul had the heartache. Paul had the heartbreak with the Galatians. What am I talking about? I'm talking about our first point. Peter speaks of his duty, and Paul had a duty, too, to remind the believers, because guess what? Today, you may be rooted in truth, but if you are not solid, the devil will use somebody to move you. Can I get a witness there? And, and Paul, the apostle, had this heartbreak and this heartache, and I could feel Paul because those who've been sitting under our leadership here at Beulah, we, we scribe to just give you line upon line, precept upon precept. We try to give you the whole context and make sure you get understanding so you won't be deceived. But then there are those who would like, who would let this jack rabbit trick them off of truth. Can I get a witness? Uh, this is what Paul's agony was in Galatians chapter 3. Listen to verse 1 through 3. Listen at the heartbeat of the apostle Paul. And sometimes when I hear people that's been sitting in our ministry for years and then hear them begin to say, I believe this and I believe that. I'm saying, what were you doing when you were sitting here? Yeah, yeah, what, you were just stargazing? Yeah, yeah. I sure can't wait till I get home to them collard greens and neck bones cornbread and macaroni and cheese and sweet tea, flush it down with some banana pudding apple. That's what they had to been doing. Because there's no way they could be taking in this good word and let somebody just move them off a solid truth. Paul heart aches in Galatians chapter 3 verse 1. Listen to what Paul says. Oh foolish Galatians. Now if I said that you people get offended go find a new church. They ain't going to talk to me like that. I'm going to call it me foolish. <laughs> Can I get a witness? I dare he called me foolish. Look what Paul says. Oh, foolish Galatians. Who has bewitched you? Listen to what Paul said. Who has duped you? Who has tricked you? We got another phrase we used to use back. Who has flim flam you? Oh, foolish Galatians. Who has bewitched you? That you should not obey the truth. Before whose eyes Jesus Christ was dearly, clearly portrayed among you as crucified. Paul is trying to remind them how they were saved. But now they're coming and letting some, some, some jackrabbit pull them off of that. Verse 2. This only I want to learn from you. This is what I want to learn. Did you receive the spirit by the works of the law? Or by the hearing of faith? Are you so foolish, having begun in the spirit, are you now made perfect by the flesh? Paul said, there is only one way that you were saved, and that was by faith in God's word. You wasn't saved because of circumcision and baptism. How have you let somebody move you off of the truth? And that's what Peter is saying. How, if I don't do my duty... If I don't remind you, there stands the chance of you being no longer established on the truth, but you will be moved what? Off or from or away from the truth. Are we getting that Facebook? Number one, Peter speaks of his duty. I like what Warren Wisby said. This is what Warren Wisby says. Warren Wisby said, said this, we forget what we ought to remember and remember what we ought to forget. Oh, let me preach, Mr. Ben. <laughs> we forget what we ought to remember and remember what we what? ought to forget. Let me push it. Can I push it? You ought to be remembering what Ephesians chapter 1 says, but you let your jam come on from 30 years ago. 
Boy, you go to popping the fingers, stumping the feet. Boy, you remember every lyric, every word, but you don't know two scriptures out of Ephesians chapter 1. Man, I'm pushing it right now. <laughs> I'm pushing it, brother. I, was, I mean, boy, you let that thing come on. It could have been derogatory or that was my jam right there. And you know it from the very first word to the last word of the song. But if I ask you, just tell me. Tell me. I can ask you. What? Tell me where John 3.16. <laughs> Y'all missed that. <laughs> and you'll scratch. Where is John 3.16? John 3.16 is in John 3.16. Y'all, some of y'all were lost right there. I'm trying to tell you. See, you, 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 you forget what you ought to remember and don't remember what you ought to forget. We got to remember. <laughs> Peter said, this is my duty. My duty is to remind you. Paul wrote in that, that, that wonderful little epistle of Philippians chapter 3, verse 1. This is what Paul said in that. He said, finally, my brethren, rejoice in the Lord. For to me to write the same things to you is not tedious, but for you it is safe. Did y'all hear what Paul said? Paul said, listen, for me to write the same things to you. You know, you got people that want something new. I want something new. Well, have you done the old? See, I don't have no problem repeating what I said. The question is, do you have, do you have the issue of what remembering what I said? Paul said, it is good for me to write to you the same thing. Noah preached one message. Watch this now. Watch this. We're going on. Peter speaks of his duty. His duty was to remind them. Noah preached one message for 120 years. Repent. If I was to come in here every Sunday and preach John 3, 16 every Sunday, here he go again. But are you living it? Have you become born again? 120 years, Noah repent, preached the message. He was a preacher of righteousness. Repent and get right with God and do it now. And only eight people took heed to the message that Noah preached. Here in 2 Peter chapter 1, we talk about Peter says, listen, I'm telling you my duty. Let's read verse 12 and 13 again. For this reason, I would not be negligent to remind you always of these things, though you know, you know them and are established in the present truth. Yes, I think it is right as long as I am in this tent to what? Stir you up. How am I to stir you up? How am I to motivate and exhort you? Is by what? Reminding you. Listen, let's be honest. We do forget. In many times I'm hearing a message. I just we went to a uh, um, uh, men's conference, and, and the, the preacher was preaching on Ephesians 5. Now, I know Ephesians 5. I didn't preach Ephesians 5 numerous times. But guess what? I had to be remind, reminded that I need to love my wife like Christ. Love the church. I said, Lord, thank you for that great reminder. We got calendars and all, all around to remind us of doing special things and important things, but do you have a calendar in mind you need to be reminded of the word? Ooh, I just pushed it just now. Peter says here in verse 13, yes, I think it is right. Listen to what Peter said, as long as I'm in this tent, the word tent, this is what we're about to go to our second point, the word tent means body. Peter says, as long as I'm in this body. Meaning, as long as I am with you, I'm going to what? Remind you. And guess what? As long as God got me in this body and God got me in this right mind, guess what, members of Beulah, friends of Beulah, watch about Facebook, guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to remind. There are sermon series we're going to preach again and again and again. You know why? We need to be reminded. <laughs> we need to be reminded. And guess what? The word of God is alive. Yeah. See, the word of God is not out there. It needs to be updated. <laughs> we just need to keep it in front of us. Can I get a witness there? Uh -huh. Peter says here in verse 13 of 2 Peter chapter 1, yes, I think it is right as long as I'm in this tent to stir you up by reminding you, knowing that shortly I must put off my tent. Yeah. Our first point, Peter speaks of his 
duty. Say that with me. Peter speaks of his duty. Say that again. Peter speaks of his duty. My duty, Peter says, it is to remind you, to give you remindings. Can I get a witness? But now Peter is going to speak of his departure. Peter took the responsibility to remind them because he realized he was not going to always be with them. I remember as little boys, me and my brother Daryl, we was in the house. And I, I, I rem when I started studying this out, and, and I remember one day Daryl had did something. And my daddy had Daryl in the den. And I remember my daddy saying, son, you got to get this. And I hear these words like Peter He's told Daryl, you got to get this, and this is what he said, Shannon, because I'm not going to always be here. Son, I'm not going to always be around. You got to get this deep down in your heart that when I'm far long and gone, it'll come back to your remembrance. I remember that day just like yesterday. Peter said, listen, I'm telling you my duty. My duty is to remind you, but now I want to conclude. I want to tell you of my departure. Listen what Peter says here in verse 13 of 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 14 and 15. He said, yes, I think it is right as long as I am in this tent, this body, to stir you up by what reminding you, knowing that shortly I must what? Put off my tent. I must lay aside this body. Now, now, Peter is preaching and teaching from a pilgrim perspective. You know what a pilgrim is? A pilgrim is a person that's always moving. Y'all not getting here. See, the problem with the average saint now, we live like this world our home. When we should be living with the pilgrim mentality. Uh, Peter said, listen, you and I need to be living with the pilgrim at any time we know we can lay it off our tent. Y'all know why? You know why Peter likens this body to the tent? Because Abraham lived in a tent. And you know why? When God told him to move, he just, what, fold up the tent? See, Lot went down to Sodom and Gomorrah and built a house. Y'all better read that. See, no, no, no. Abraham never built a house. He just traveled in a tent because he realized that I'm looking for a maker and builder. Who is God? And too often we build homes in this world. Steady living with tents. Peter said, listen, I get this now. Get this. Let me slow down my wife. Tell me you slow down sometime. Peter had accepted. I need to talk to this. Next. Give me 10 more minutes. Peter had accepted that one day he was going to leave here. Come here, y'all. Facebook, have you accepted that yet? Because whether you want to or not, when Jesus say your time is up, you out of here. I'm out. But the question is, have we come to accept that reality of our mortality? Boy, I'm a, I'm, I'm, I'm a camp out right there. See, many people have not yet come to accept the reality of their mortality. That every day we wake up, this body is steady decaying. Peter says, listen, I want to keep you with a fresh reminder because I realize that one day I'm going to depart from here. What Peter was saying, that word, the second book of the Bible, you got Genesis, is the same word for departure as what, what Moses wrote, Exodus. When God showed up in, e in Egypt through Moses and what? The people exited Egypt. Are y'all following me? This is the same word that Peter departure. Listen, it doesn't mean it's over. No, it only just begun. <laughs> it wasn't over for the children of Israel leaving Egypt. It had only, it had only just begun. Guess what? It's not over when I leave here. It's only just begun at my exodus. I don't know about yours. It only just begun at my exodus. It is the same word here, departure. I love, I love this because let's read verse 13 again. He says this, <laughs> verse 13 to 2 Peter 1. Yes, I think it is right as long as I'm in this tent to stir you up by what? Reminding you, knowing that shortly I must put off my tent just as our Lord Jesus Christ 
show me. Moreover, I will be careful to ensure you, excuse me, ensure that you always have a reminder of these things after my decease. Peter said, when I'm far and gone, you're going to be sitting around, and it's going to come to your heart what I said. <laughs> Can I get a witness? I often testify, I'm living off something my daddy taught me 30 years ago. Can I get a witness? He's far and gone, but there are some things he spoke to my heart, and I'm living. That's the way we need to be with the word. I, I, I need us to get this now. I need to, he said this in verse 13 again. Yes, I think it is right. As long as I'm in this tent to stir you up by reminding you, knowing that shortly I must put off my tent, my body, just as our Lord Jesus did what? Show me. Some people, they're going to another room, you start talking about death. Because they have not yet come to settle the issue that if they are in Christ, all is well with their souls. Come on, y'all, let's talk, let's talk. Just the other day, we had got some new insurance, and, and, and charisma is somewhere on deployment. <laughs> And I called her, I said, baby, daddy need to let you know that if something happened to mom and daddy, we got a new policy. See, see y'all. <laughs> Don't talk. Why not? See, no, we got to let our baby know, baby, you got a house and you got insurance money. Uh, and she said, do I spend all that on a funeral? See, y'all better talk to this. I said, no, baby. Don't you spend all that on no funeral. <laughs> Baby, you just put mom and dad in the ground nicely, but put the rest up for you. You know why? Terrain and I are satisfied that one day we're going to leave. And now we pray it's in the rapture. We pray. We talk about it. She said, I just pray that we go together in the rapture. I said, me too, baby. But if that's not his will, guess what? All is well. See, see, y'all scared to talk about. But listen, there is nothing to be afraid. See, see, when people say that so-and-so is lost, I mean, so, oh, we lost so-and-so. Listen, when I'm gone, I ain't lost. When you're lost, that means you don't know where something's at. When, the, listen, to be absent from the body for me is to be present with the Lord. I ain't lost at all. I know just where I'm going. This is what Peter was saying. Peter said, listen, I know that one day I'm going to have to lay inside this tent. Yes, your heart aches when loved ones leave. That's why it's incumbent upon us to get people saved so we realize if they was to leave here before us, there will come a time we'll see them again at our exodus. God knows I ain't got to be all over no people. Ah! No, because I know one day this world ain't my home. And if my wife, and I know my wife saved, and my daughter and, and look, I know that one day I'm going to see him again. Yes, a tear will fall from your eye when special days come around. You remember, but I ain't got to be down there wallowing and all that. No. Can I get a witness? Uh, Peter said, as the Lord showed me. He said, I got to lay off this tent like the Lord showed him. When, when did the Lord show him? In John 21, 18. Listen at John 21, John's Gospel 21, chapter 21, verse 18. This is what Jesus told Peter. He says, most assuredly, I say to you, when you were younger, you girded yourself and walked where you wish. But when you are old, you will, you will stretch out your hands and another will gird you and carry you where you do not wish. So Jesus had already showed Peter how he was going to die. <laughs> this is my own understanding, Brother James. That's why I believe in Acts 12, Peter could sleep like a baby between. <laughs> Y'all don't remember when, when, when they had Herod had cut off James' head? And they went and got Peter too, and Peter was locked in the prison. And the Bible said Peter was so asleep, the angel had to hit him. Get up. See, 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 you, you can rest. You got real assurance when you're reminded. And I believe that when they arrested Peter, Peter gained reassurance by reminding what Jesus had said. There's going to come a time they're going to lead you where you don't wish to go. But all is well because you're coming home to be with me. 
can say, yeah, I'm telling you my duty. My duty is to remind you. But I got to also tell you my departure. One day I'm going to leave here. Paul didn't have a problem with leaving here. Paul said in 2 Timothy chapter 4, Paul said, I'm now ready. <laughs> Boy, listen here. I, I, I'm like, Paul, sometime down here, I said, Lord, you know, if my time is up, I'm ready to come home. See, see, when you, when you understand where you're going and you haven't made this world your home, you're just living in a tent, you're ready to go at any time. Can I get a witness? Yeah. See, you got to get in the Word and let the Word get in you to settle, the, settle your heart that you are reminded of these things that one day we're going to depart from here. Yeah. This is what Peter is saying. <laughs> Peter said, listen, I realize the Lord has shown me one day I'm going to depart. I love Paul. Paul says, listen, I'm now ready. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 6, Paul said, I'm now ready to be poured out like a drink offering. Paul said, I'm ready to leave here. I love what Paul, I love what Paul said in Philippians chapter 1. Listen, we almost through. I love what Paul said in Philippians chapter 1. Y'all get this in Philippians chapter 1. Listen to Paul's perspective about life. And you can grow in such a relationship with Jesus Christ, you can have the same perspective. I, I remember my mama was getting feeble and she was getting worse and worse and the time had come we was just about to have to make a decision because she couldn't stay in the house by herself she needed 24 uh, 7 care and and us boys four boys Tim dad Hal and myself we met we met with her and we was like mama mama we we love you your boy she said I know y'all boys love me I said but mama something gonna have to give you can't stay in this house by you she said baby I ain't gonna be in this house no longer than what God want me and on that Tuesday Seven years ago when I came, Terrain called me and said, they can't get in the house. I said, they can't get in the house. Mama normally up at 730. And I, and I, and I remember like yesterday walking down the hallway and, and, and when I turned in her room and saw her on that floor. And I went and grabbed her as her baby. And I cried out, mama, mama, mama. And I realized mama has slipped from earth into eternity. Mama made a transition. I called Hal. I said, Hal, Mama's gone. He ran over there. Me and him was in the room for a while, and we just rocked her. We rocked her because she was a mama. But you know what? Me, Tim, Daryl, and Hal, we talk about mom was getting worse. Now, if we really believe the gospel, that Jesus is going away to prepare a place for us, and if he's going away to prepare a place for us, one day he's going to... Now, why would I be selfish and want my mama to suffer on this side when he's prepared a place for her on the other side? That's selfish on my behalf. There were days she couldn't breathe, pen for breath. And if I really believe that Jesus said, and he mean what he said, I could gain comfort at her exodus. There's time I think about her. Yes, I get emotional, but I believe she's in the arms of the master. And that's where my heart gains relief. Can I get a witness there? This is what Peter is saying. Paul said this in Philippians chapter 1, according, verse 20 and 21, according to my earnest expectation and hope that in nothing I should be ashamed, but with all boldness as always, so now also Christ will be magnified in my body, whether by life or by death. For me to live is Christ, and to die is... Did y'all hear what he just said? Paul said, for me to live here in this tent, in this body, that, that, that is Christ. I live for Christ, but to depart, it's no loss. It's gain. Paul said, watch this, while I'm living here, I'm magnifying the Lord, but when I leave, I'm going to move with the Lord. <laughs> Can I get a witness there? He said, long as I'm in this tent, long as I'm in this body, I'm here to magnify the Lord. But Lord Jesus, whenever that time you got set, I'm ready to move and be with the Lord. Let me come to 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Paul talks about this tent. Listen to what 2 Corinthians chapter 5 talks about. Peter says, the Lord has showed me that I must lay aside this tent. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 1 through 3 says, For we know that if our earthly house, this tent, 
This body is destroyed. We have a building from God. See, you have to grow to know that. See, see, y'all, you have to grow to know that if this tent, this body, this earthly house is dissolved, we got another home. Jesus has given us a glorified body. Can I get a witness there? He says in 2 Corinthians 5, verse 1, For we know, there that word no, epikonosis, listen, for we know that if our earthly house, this tent, is destroyed, we have a building from God. Listen, I wouldn't be preaching like this about dying one day if I haven't got a word from God. <laughs> I would be tiptoeing around this because I wouldn't have no real, but because I know my God can't lie. Can I get a witness? Because I know whatever he say is the truth. I know that, that this tent, this earthly house, if this thing is destroyed, we have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens, for in this we groan. Listen, this is why sometimes I, I ride down the street and I say, Lord, I love my wife and I love my daughter, but Lord, Lord, I, Lord, I could come be with you. You know why? Because in this body, if you really, you groan. You look at our world condition. You look at all the foolishness going on in the world. You're telling me you're not longing for that place that he's going to prepare? Something is wrong. I mean, I mean, you got all of this abomination going on, all of this chaos. And sometimes when you really think, Lord, I tell you what, some Lord, woo, Jesus. I'm like what Paul saying is in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 2. He said, For in this we groan. Watch this now. Listen to what Paul said. Earnestly designed to be clothed with our habitation, which is from heaven. Mm, mm, mm. If indeed having been clothed, we should not be found naked. I remember when my wife was diagnosed with breast cancer. She settled the issue because she realized it's all about God's will. We pray for healing. We know God is Jehovah Rapha. But we also got to understand that God will supersede what we want. See, y'all, y'all not getting that. See, see, God's will. Jesus said, Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass. That's what I want. But, Father, that's not what your will. And she settled the issue. You know what? If God want me to be here, I'm going to be here. And if it's time for me to go home. I'm going home. We went to a pastoral conference last year in Jacksonville, the one uh, Minister Dawson and I go to every year. Preacher, same year, same age. Uh -huh. That man got to preaching that thing. Uh -huh. His wife, we was the same age. Uh -huh. The same year, his wife was 40. Terrain was 40, 2012. Same year, she was diagnosed with breast cancer. Guess what? She gone yeah. uh -huh. to glory. And I stood there and wept like a baby that God, for whatever reason, you show favor upon me. This man preaching the word of God like I'm preaching the word of God. Can I get a witness there? Peter speaks of his duty. Now Peter speaks of his departure. Let's end with this. Verse 14 again. Knowing that shortly I must put off my tent. I'm going I'm to ask this question again. Have you come to that point, a reality with your mortality? If not, you better get there. And there's only one way you can have confidence and be comfortable by leaving here. Jesus better be your Lord. I'm not talking about church membership. I'm talking about making sure your name is written in the Lamb's book of life. You can't, you, listen, you're not going to get to heaven because you're a member of Beulah. A lot of people got this, no matter, and see, no matter how much I get on this floor and preach that, some people still not trying to surrender their life to Jesus. They think Jesus playing. You know, mama used to say back in the day, Angela, let me tell you what mama used to say. Mama said, you better wash my dishes. Don't try me. See if I'm playing. I know she wasn't playing. Some people think Jesus playing. Jesus ain't playing. <laughs> he said he speaks of his duty, but now he speaks of his departure. Yeah. Verse 15, he said, moreover, I will be careful to ensure that you always have a reminder of these things after my deceased departure. Peter said, after my departure, 
because I've done my duty, you're going to be reminded of these truths. There's a story about an old man was talking to a young man. The older man asked the young man this. This is the question the older man asked the young man. What are you going to do with your life? The young man said, well, sir, I'm going to graduate from high school. The old man said, and then what? He said, I'm going to college. He said, and then what? He said, after I get my bachelor, I'm going to get my master's. He said, and then what? He said, after I get my master's, I'm going to get my PhD. The old man said, and then what? He said, then I'm going to find me a career, and I'm just going to live, and I'm just going to enjoy uh, the fruits of my labor. The old man said, and then what? He said, then I'm going to settle down and get married, and then I'm going to have some children. He said, and then what? He said, then I pray that I become a, a granddaddy. I can play with my grandkids. And the old man said, yeah, okay, and then what? He said, well, I guess after that, die. And the old man said, yeah, and then what? Because it's not over then. And what we do, we pour all of our life into this life and don't get ready for our departure. Ooh, let me say that again, Cole. See, what we do, we, 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 we pour everything into this life and never prepare for our exodus. That what Jesus said in Matthew 16, right? What does it profit a man? What does it benefit a man? What advantage does it have to a man to gain the what? The whole world and to die and lose his soul. And that's what really bothers me right now with the church. We're talking about a lot of stuff, we, but we've gotten away from talking about people's souls and the gospel. I am firm we need to be speaking on social injustices and all that, but the church must not forget our primary mandate, and that's to make sure souls are on the way to heaven. And the only way they can do that. See, the devil is cunning now. See, people don't like to hear that the devil is cunning. He'll get us sidetracked, and we're no longer focused on what we need to be. I'm not saying we don't supposed to speak out, speak up, and speak out. But what is it to gain all the privileges here and die and go to hell there? What have you gained? Nothing. Peter said, I want to give you reassurance through remembrance. Let us pray. Father, in the gracious and wonderful name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for part three of our series, Grow, to show what you know. Father, Peter was clear. He was clear about his departure. But he also was clear about his duty. His duty was to remind the saints. And Lord, I'm clear on my duty before my departure. You've called me to remind your people of your truth. Father, so often we are so preparing ourselves for this life as if one day we're not going to leave here. Peter was ready for his exodus. Paul was ready for his exodus. Stephen was ready for his exodus. And we could be ready for ours as well. When that time comes, when, when on this life is over, Lord, we don't have to be afraid. We can fly away. To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. For those, Paul said, while I'm living, I'm here to magnify the Lord. But Lord, when this life is over, I'm ready to move and be with the Lord. Father, thank you. For this great reminder today of your holy and righteous word. In Jesus' holy name. Amen. Once again, we are honored that you have tuned in and joined us through worship today, through Facebook Live. But once again, if you have stumbled upon us in God's providence, that God has led you to Beulah to watch us view us by Facebook Live, and you say, that's a church that's just tugging at my heart. We would love to hear from you. Please send us an email at info at BeulahBBC.com and we will get it and we will reach out to you because we want to hear from you. Also, as we talked about earlier, 
I want to thank the members for being faithful in their giving through this time of pandemic. You've been so faithful, and let's keep it up because we are right on course with our building project. And the reason we are able to move forward with our building project is because you've been so faithful monthly with your support of the church through your financial contribution. And as your pastor, I want to say thank you. And I just want to remind you the ways that you can give to Beulah. You can go to www.beulahbbc.com. At the top, there's a donation button. You could click on that button, and there are two ways you could give. You could give a tithes and offering, or you could give into our building fund. We will be grateful that if you believe that Beulah is being a blessing to you, we will be honored that you will sow your gift into us. We also can mail it to Beulah. Beulah Baptist Church, 619 East Anderson Street, Savannah, Georgia, 31401. We're honored. We are honored any way you see to give, or you can stop by the church in our secure location in our front door, and you can put it in the mail slot. We will be honored. I promise you, we believe in handling the resources with integrity and transparency. Whatever we take up, it goes to you. It's used for the glory of our God and advancement of his kingdom. Uh, the members of Beulah know we believe in being transparent here with the finances. Yes. We have nothing to hide. Amen? Amen. There's a difference between being, having privacy and secrecy. Some people have secrecy. Can I get a witness? Yes. And there's nothing secret about our finances here at Beulah Baptist Church. We are so grateful. Right there on the screen is the four ways that you can give into Beulah Baptist Church. And as I said earlier, members of Beulah, don't forget... Next month, we want to start our support and our pledging, the 25 minimal on top of our regular giving, the 25 additional dollars. That's the least that you can do. You can do more if you can into our building fund. The reason for that, we want to pay off this debt fast. We don't want this loan over our head for years and years. No, we want to be free to be able to help the single mom, help the family, pour resources into our community here. Amen? And there's nothing like having liberty to do that. So once again, we are grateful. But now we're coming to a very sacred time of our service. On the third Sunday of each month, we remember what the Lord has done for us. Amen. I pray that you've gotten your elements together. You've gotten some type of bread, some type of juice, saltine cracker or something, as we remember what our Lord did for us. Paul writing his letter to the Corinthians Paul had to remind the Corinthians of this truth about what the Lord had done for them. And so often, so often, we do have a tendency to forget. It's become a ritual now versus re continue to have reverence for the Lord's blood and body. Jesus sat in the upper room with his disciples. And as he sat in the upper room with his disciples, he had just partake of the Passover meal. God had instituted the Passover meal for the children of Israel. He wanted them to remember how he had brought their forefathers and foremothers out of the land of Egypt. And then Jesus transitioned from the Passover until the Last Supper. Jesus was now about to eat this uh, uh, special feast day for the last time with his disciples. Then Paul had to write a letter to the Corinthians because they had what they would call the love feast. And the love feast was this, this bounty of food and it would turn over to the Lord's table, but they were abusing the table. And this is what Paul wrote in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23 says, For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the same night in which he was betrayed took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. This is what Jesus said. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. So on the third Sunday of each month, we do this in the remembrance of our Lord Jesus Christ and all that he's done for us. Let us pray. Father, in the gracious and wonderful name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you for the great sacrifice that you made for us. And Father, we pray here at Beulah as well as by Facebook Live that this won't be some ritual we're just doing, 
but we will hold this, this ordinance in high reverence, respect, as we reflect and remember what you did for us. Yet while we were sinners, Christ, you died for us. I pray for our hearts right now, and I pray that each man, each woman that is here watching by faith would examine themselves. Paul said, uh, because they wasn't examining their hearts, their hearts were full of sin, and they had no, no intentions of repenting. They were eating and drinking damnation into their own souls. Lord, I pray that's not the case here today. I pray that men and women are really searching their hearts and seeing where they are with you. Father, thank you. Turn this physical elements into a spiritual use that you may be glorified. Forgive us of our sins. Thank you for your shed blood. In Jesus' name we pray. They all ate together. Let us eat together. And they all drink together. Let us drink together. But and sisters, they went out to a Mount of Olives. We don't have a physical Mount of Olives, but we have a world that is dying into sin. And it's our responsibility to make sure that we do not lose focus off of our mandate. And that is to share the love of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Our choir is now coming with our final selection on this third Sunday. Once again, grateful for the love that has been shown by the members here. On next Sunday will be 14 years the Lord has called us to serve here. And we're excited about what the Lord has done. But we are excited about where the Lord is taking us. Amen. We're now going to hear from our own choir.
What a great reminder for our choir, from our choir, I won't go back. Not only I won't go back, I can't go back to where it used to be before your presence came and changed me. You already know what's back there. Heartache, heartbreak, headache. Why not let's move forward in all that the Lord Jesus Christ has in store for us. Amen. Once again, we love you. We thank God for you. Let us pray. Father, in the gracious and wonderful name of Jesus, Lord, we just thank you. Thank you for being our great I am. Thank you for loving us so that we won't go back. We can't go back. Thank you for that reminder of the way we used to be. Now, Lord, as we depart from this place, but never from your presence, Holy Spirit, living God, keep us rooted and keep us grounded upon the truth of our Father's word. Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you for all that you are and all that you do. These and all blessed we ask in Jesus' precious name. And everyone said.